This is my chuck box that I've had for well over 25 years. And it's served its purpose. It's nothing special. Uh, it's just a box that I put together that I could throw in all my stuff that we take when we go camping. And I made it big enough to where I could put a bunch of stuff in there. And again, you know, when the whole family was going, there would be five, five of us and if the kids brought some friends or could be even eight of us at times. So it uh, needed to have quite a bit of room and over the years it's, you know, served its purpose. It's starting to get a little, little uh, warped being out in the weather just a little bit not too much and then before I came up I uh, I purged and I got a lot I got rid of a lot of stuff that I'm like I don't need duplicates and triplicates of it anymore because it's just uh, gonna be two three at the most so I think the next project that uh, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new chuck bot uh, a little bit more organized as far as uh, where things go instead of everything just being put in the box and and kind of scrounging through it when we're done so I, I think uh, yeah I think that'll be the next project so let's uh, let's go to the shop and let's get started so this is what I came up with uh, regarding the new chuck box I went out on uh, YouTube and did a whole bunch of searches on different kinds of uh, chuck boxes out there and I came across this one made by Lance Wood, Wood Shop. And he, uh, he put a design together that I thought would fit my needs perfectly. Um, he didn't show how to build it, but he did show the content of it. And looking at that, I thought that's perfect. That's exactly what I need. So this design is an exact replica of Lance's. And I took every all the um, design from him so he gets all the credit. This is a, a replica of what he made. I'll put a link to his web page uh, uh, in the description field, but this definitely uh, fits my needs. So let me show you how it's... Uh, how so it's whenever I cut plywood, I like to lay it on a sacrificial board and then go ahead and make my cuts and cut through. And obviously, you know, when you cut through, you're going to cut into the board below. But just so that I'm not trying to go ahead and and put big pieces through the table saw and it being awkward and I can't cut it straight. I usually cut the boards first into pieces, but again, I have a sacrificial board underneath. So I would recommend that whenever you're cutting plywood and you're by yourself and you're going to be cutting it into small pieces versus uh, you know, seven or eight foot strips, uh, break it down if you can. It's much more safer to do it that way. And that's what I'm about to do here is lay the plywood out, but I wanted to show you the sacrificial board first so whenever I make my cuts, that's what I'm cutting into. I got a new saw probably six, seven months ago, and I have this jig that I can, uh, I can use where I have a, a straight edge, a piece of plywood, and then anywhere where I uh, cut a straight line, I can go ahead and line this up exactly on that mark, and then take my saw and uh, run it against this board and it'll it'll cut straight. Unfortunately, this uh, jig that I have does not fit uh, the new saw that I got. So I need to quickly uh, make up another jig that'll fit. This is uh, this is going to be too small, so I can't reuse it. I still have the old saw, so I'll keep this temporarily. But uh, as you can see, it's nothing more than a piece of uh, quarter-inch plywood and a straight board uh, that I have here. Another piece of plywood. And so I don't have a piece of plywood right now that I scrap. I will after this project. But what I'm going to do right now is just take a, uh, a one by here real quick and go ahead and attach it to a piece of uh, quarter inch uh, paneling that I have here just to make a straight edge. It won't be my permanent jig, but it'll get me through this project. So again, just take a one by, uh, attach it to uh, your subboard here, and then you're going to take your saw and then run it. And then that'll make this, uh, these two sides parallel with one another. So when you make a cut, it'll be nice and straight. So let me just throw this together real quick. And uh, the length, you can make it whatever you want. You can make it 8 feet, 9 feet, whatever you want. I'm going to be using, just because I have this, uh, it's a little over, it's like 52 inches, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and use that uh, for my quick 
set up here and then we'll get started on get back to the grub box. Okay, so there you have it. Now you got a quick jig that I can ride my saw along, and then uh, this edge and this edge are parallel to one another, so I can line it up and be able to, to cut it. So yeah, this works out really well, that uh, nice and straight. And then you can see that, uh, oops, sorry about that. You can see that it didn't take long to make, and then as I go ahead and uh, this is just a cut I made earlier on a scrap piece of plywood, but I can line the line up perfectly and then run my saw and then I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. So quick jig and so now let's get back to the grub box. So here's the spreadsheet or the layout sheet that I did earlier. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm going to go through and I'm going to mark up the board to make sure that uh, the dimensions that I have here that I laid out on the computer actually work on the plywood and then I'm not going to come up short. So I'm going to just take the next couple of minutes and um, mark up the plywood and make sure that it, that it all lays out according to plan. So let me do that right now. Okay, well it all laid out perfectly. I've got all my marks, so let me go ahead and uh, grab my straight edge and we will go ahead and draw out the line so that we can cut this down into smaller pieces to run it across the table saw. Okay, there we go. I've got all the pieces uh, rough cut. Um, we need to uh, fine tune them. They're within a, a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch of their final dimensions. But out of <clears throat> a sheet of plywood, I was able to cut all the pieces and get them into their proper, uh, uh, their proper shape. So I'm going to fine tune their cuts and uh, cut them uh, ex to their exact length now. This is all rough cut. And just putting them on a piece of paper uh, like this and laying it out definitely helps with the uh, the amount of waste that you get and so taking that extra effort will save you time and money 
when you go to do a project like this. Um, out of all of that entire uh, sheet of plywood, other than the, the little scrap that I'll get when I fine tune them, there, there wasn't much waste at all. In fact, um, those two pieces are the only two pieces that were left after cutting all of this out. And that will definitely uh, be used on another project that are still of significant size uh, to do something with. So um, doing that ahead of time definitely helps out. So now we're, uh, we're going to turn our attention to the table saw and start doing some work on this to, fi to uh, fine tune the pieces. So the next step is, is I need to go ahead and cut rabbits and dados into the appropriate boards. So everywhere where you see uh, where a board slightly goes into the other board, uh, that's either a rabbit or a dado. If it's on the edge, it's called a rabbit. If it's in the middle of the board, it's called a dado. So I'm going to pull out my router and uh, my jig that I have for that and we'll get uh, marking up these boards to figure out exactly where the dados go. The other thing that we need to consider is, is that um, even though I've got two parts that are called A, the dados that go into those are different. So one thing I didn't do on the drawing that I'll modify before I, I, I publish it is, is I'll probably do an A1, A2, uh, B1, B2, B3, just because the dados that go into each of those boards is different. The, their dimension is uh, the same as far as being A and then, uh, you know, A1, A2. However, the dados are different. So I'm going to mark the drawing up and change it so that it's A1 and then A2. And then that way we'll, it's easier to distinguish between uh, which one is the bottom, which one's the top, and then which ones get uh, a dado uh, at certain spots. As you can see here, this is A, and I have a dado here for piece L, but piece L doesn't go all the way up to the top A board. So we just need to be careful about that. Uh, keep in mind which piece is what. So I'm going to mark this uh, drawing up a little di different, label my pieces A1, A2, and so forth, uh, so I don't get them confused when I go to lay out the dados. Just, uh, just a note that I would let you know about that. All right, well, I'm set up here with uh, my router and my uh, rabbiting jig. And what this is, is uh, it's just basically a, a piece of uh, Luan or uh, quarter inch plywood with some uh, furring strips that I made that will, uh, that's a perfect um, parallel lines with, the, with one another. And so basically, as you can see here, the router fits in between the base here to keep it nice and straight. And then I can go ahead and line up my line where my, my dado is supposed to go. And I run my router all the way down. And what that does is, is it just keeps it nice and straight. I got everything uh, uh, clamped down to the bench so it's not going to move. And so as I run the router through, it'll be a nice straight cut all the way through. And when I know that I have pieces that are going to match up, I try and and butt them end to end so that that groove is uh, 
uh, lined up perfectly uh, on both pieces. So that's what we're doing now. Um, this is a, a jig for a half inch bit here. And then I have another jig here for a three quarter inch uh, when I'm doing uh, three quarter inch plywood. So it's a quick, real quick jig to make. Um, really saves time and allows me to get pretty accurate cuts. When you're using this jig and you have your router <clears throat> in the in the jig itself, always let your router come to a complete stop before you take it out. Because if you would take your your router out, you will go ahead and clip the clip the edge right here, and in doing so, you'll make your jig um, have little <laughs> nubs in it. When you go to use it, you'll be putting those nubs into your product. So whenever you you're using this jig and you're bringing sliding this back and forth. Just make sure that when you turn it off, that you wait until the, the bit comes to a complete stop and then you can take it out without worrying about uh, ruining your jig. Okay guys, um, I just made a big blunder here. Uh, when I was cutting my dados on the A2 piece, the piece that goes on the very bottom, I should have had stop dados here because this is going to be the front of the case, but I ran my dados all the way through. So I just wanted to uh, let you know that when you go to cut the dados into the base, and also into the top that you need to have stop dados that they don't don't come all the way through. Uh, that was a mistake. Wanted to show you that, so I've corrected it. I cut it. I cut another piece, and I'm gonna dado those out, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, all of the uh, dados are cut. I have all my pieces labeled. So before I do any assembly, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sand everything up. Uh, make sure that uh, it's gonna dry fit. Uh, together before I put in any glue. So um, as you can see, I've got dados uh, cut from my shelf. This is my bottom piece with the appropriate dados, the ones that don't go through. Um, here are my pieces. Some of them have uh, dados on one side and uh, uh, other ones have dados on, on two sides. So you just got to make sure that you keep your pieces straight. And uh, so when you go to assemble it, it'll all fit together nicely so that's what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna sand this up and dry fit it and I'll show you what it looks like before I glue it up
Well, there it is. Um, just roughly put together. Everything fit based upon the measurements, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I really took my time measuring out on plywood. And again, here's another uh, benefit of doing so to make sure that everything works out great. So here we have it. Here we have the dry fit. And so I'm, I'm pretty pleased. I think that uh, this will suffice me very well compared to what I had before. So we're getting there. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, take this apart and then I'll reassemble it and I'll glue it and then I'll brad, uh, brad nail it as well just to put some pins in there to hold it while the glue dries. But this is where we're at. This is how it's going together. Okay, uh, now that we're um, on to the next phase, which is making the doors. And there's a couple of different ways that you can make them. Uh, you could um, go ahead and dovetail the corners or half blind the, uh, put dados in the, in the ends here. I just decided to uh, go ahead and square these off and just nail it like this since there'll be a piece of plywood on top to keep it square and... Um, go ahead and you know keep it rigid so I don't think I need to go through all the the process of datoing the and rabbiting the ends so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uh, make a frame like this and then um, once the frame's done then I'll go ahead and, and put the plywood on on top and secure that onto the onto the frame and then it'll look like this uh, when it's all said and done so the doors are, are very simple and then on the inside you can go ahead and put a shelf where you want one if you want a shelf or a divider um, so you can pretty much customize this just like the the uh, the main case you can customize the doors however you want so I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, making the doors here I've got one done uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the second one and then we can go ahead and mount it with the hinges on the uh, on the sides well the base is done I went ahead and uh, used, used the scrap plywood that I had left over I left the front uh, legs kind of wide I wanted to make sure that it was uh, stable the side legs are a little bit narrower, as you can tell. Uh, again, um, it's the last half of the uh, half-inch plywood that I had. It took me two sheets of plywood uh, to make this project. Got to fill in some, some nail holes there. but And then I just took um, some of the scrap uh, half-inch plywood and made a lip for the box to sit on, and I'll show that next. Uh, barely, fairly light. And it fits right over the box so um, for the base what I did was is I wanted the base to be approximately 34 inches high uh, from a work surface and so I, I measured the base or measured the uh, uh, the case itself the chuck box itself and then I made the base uh, made up that difference so that it came out to be 34 inches tall so that's what she looks like uh, she's all done ready to go so I'll go ahead and uh, put this together and show you the finished product. 